students, welcome to class today. I will say this one time and I will try not to repeat it the rest of the year. Um, with the videos, you can always pause them, slow them down, and back them up. So if I'm going too fast, um, you can always do that. But one thing you cannot do is you cannot speed the video up. So I will always go fast on my videos. And then if I go too fast, uh, you can rewind them or pause them. Um, but if I go too slow, you can't speed it up. So I don't want, I don't want to do that. So I will go fast in the videos this year. Uh, welcome to class. Go ahead and grab your notebook and let's take some notes. I will tell you when I need you to write stuff down. Now remember, this is going to be a very challenging class. However, we are starting off with a review chapter. And then we're going to jump ahead in the book to the three trigonometry chapters. And then go back and start with the previous chapter. So with that in mind, um, the, f the math we're going to look at at first will be pretty easy. Um, but it's still very, very important. And it's review and it's important that we go over previous math to make sure that we're all on the same page. So let's go ahead and get started. Please copy this in your notes. We're going to look today at the real number system. The real number system and it's lesson R.1. If you'll look in your books you'll see there is a review chapter and so the R stands for review and the 1 stands for the first section. So uh, lesson R.1. All right. Now it's really important that we know the correct definitions of our number system. That is really, really, really important. Okay. Um, I do want you to copy this in your notes or at least part of it. <coughs> I would like you to copy this in your notes right here, please. Real numbers are all of the numbers in the number system. Please copy that in your notes. So whenever I say to you we're dealing with real numbers, that means all of the numbers in our number system. Now, that does not include the imaginary numbers and we're not dealing with those yet. We will deal with those later on this year. But we are going to look at right now certain sections of the real number system. So please copy this in your notes. Real numbers are all numbers in the number system. Now let's continue on. Again, I'm going to go fast. You pause the video when you need to. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this. Whole numbers, okay? The true mathematical definition, please don't miss this, students, is whole numbers, notice this, they start with the number zero right here, and they proceed to the right going on and on and on. They do not include decimals. They do not include fractions. They also do not include negative numbers. The true definition of whole numbers are the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. You need to know that. You will be quizzed on that. Okay? Whole numbers start with 0 and move to the right. Let's continue on. You need to write this in your notes, please integers integers well if you'll look right here integers are the whole numbers 0 1 2 3 on and on and on but they also include the negative whole numbers if you will so negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 they do not include decimals they do not include fractions they are the whole numbers positive and negative you'll need to know that that is what integers are all right let's continue on natural numbers you need to know what mathematicians mean when they say natural numbers natural numbers start with the number one they start with the number one and they move to the right on the number line one two three four five six seven etc Notice they do not include decimals. They do not include fractions. Uh, the natural numbers do not include 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. So what we're doing is we're taking the real number system and we're breaking it down into different parts. There's one part called the whole numbers. There's one part called integers. There's one part called natural numbers. And that's what we're looking at today, these different definitions. Okay? Now we are going to move on to two much more difficult definitions um, in this real number system. Please pay attention. These are pretty difficult. 
Okay, please write this in your notes. Let's take a look at rational numbers, and then in a second we're going to look at irrational numbers. Please copy this in your notes. Rational numbers are integers. Okay, hold it. Let's go back a page. What are integers? They are this right here, the negative numbers, the positive numbers, and zero, all the whole numbers. They are integers or any fractions that terminate or repeat. All right, now let me give you some examples of this, okay? If I, if I wrote down the number five, you would know that is a rational number because five is a integer. It's very important you know what rational numbers are. Now please watch this and listen carefully. If I wrote down the fraction one half, that terminates, and you might say, well, Mr. Earhart, what do you mean by terminate? Well, terminate means if you were to divide this out, it stops, and it does. One half is exactly what? 0.5. We call that terminating, okay? Let me give you another example. Three-fourths terminates. You know what three-fourths equals. It equals exactly 0.75. So you know what one-half is? One-half is a rational number. Three-fourths is a rational number. Five is a rational number. Are you getting this? A lot of students make this much more difficult than it needs to be. Rational numbers are any integers or any fractions that terminate or repeat. Okay? All right. Now, how about one-third? Well, if you take your calculator and type 1 divided by 3, you're going to get 0.333 repeating on and on. Well, look right here. Rational numbers are fractions that terminate or repeat. So one-third would also be a rational number. Are you getting this? Rational numbers are integers or fractions that terminate, like these fractions here, terminate, or fractions that repeat, like one-third. All of these are examples of rational numbers. Okay? All right, let's continue on. Now let's talk about ear rational numbers, irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are any number that doesn't terminate or doesn't repeat. And you might say to yourself, well, Mr. Earhart, that's impossible. Every fraction either terminates or repeats. And I would say you're correct. But that's, you're referring to fractions that have integers. How about this? What if I gave you, please write this in your notes for an example. And by the way, you need this in your notes also. You'll be quizzed on all of this information. Okay, let's go back a page. I'm going to definitely quiz you on this definition. I'm also going to quiz you on this definition. Okay, now here we go. Um, what if I wrote down this, the square root of 3? Okay, well if you were to type that into a calculator, you would get a number Okay, sorry about that. had to pause the video real quick. If you were to type into your calculator the square root of 3, you would get this right here. 1.73205 and on and on. It would not terminate and it would not repeat. You would not see a pattern like 0.050505. So this is an irrational number. How about pi? Pi does not terminate and pi does not repeat. I'm trying to look for the pi button here on my calculator really, really quickly. Um, here it is, 3.14159264. It does not terminate, it does not repeat. This would be an irrational number. Um, and of course, we learned last year in Algebra 2 the number e. And I'll look for that quickly on my calculator, uh, the number e is 2.718281 and it does not repeat. This would be an irrational number. It doesn't terminate, it doesn't repeat. So I hope you're understanding the difference here between rational and irrational. Rational numbers are integers or fractions that terminate or repeat. 
irrational numbers would be any number that doesn't terminate and doesn't repeat. Okay? And so hopefully um, that's a little bit of a help. Now let's very quickly, uh, let me give you some examples here. I want you to quickly write these in your notes and see how you do. Now I give you opportunities to have bonus points in your account and it's your job. We won't have any at this time and I know Caleb you're new to the class but I will give you chances to earn some bonus points on most of the notes and you can use these bonus points on your quizzes to help you up to five bonus points. We won't have any of those right now. Okay, uh, very quickly, the number zero. Okay, I'd like you to write the number zero in your note, and I want you to tell me um, what definitions the number zero falls under. Are you ready? You can follow along, take notes, or try it on your own, whatever you want to do. Well, if you look at your definition, we know that zero is a whole number. Okay, we also know that zero is an integer. Okay. It is not a natural number. Let's go back to our definitions. Natural numbers start with the number 1 and move on to the right. It is not a natural number. Um, it is a rational number. 0 is a rational number because it is an integer. All right. Let's try another one. Please take some really good notes on this. Negative 7. I want you to list all of the different um, categories that negative 7 falls under. Well, it would not be a whole number. Whole numbers start with a number 0 and go to the right. Negative 7 would be an integer. It would not be a natural number. Natural numbers start with a number 1 and move to the right. It would be a rational number. It would be a rational number because it is an integer. All right. Let's try another one real quick and then we'll move on. Let's try one fourth. Okay. Now look, students, one fourth is not a whole number. One fourth is not an integer. One fourth is not a natural number. One fourth is a rational number. Now, how do I know that? Because it is a fraction that does what? What does one fourth do? Does it terminate or does it repeat? Well, one fourth terminates. It's exactly 0.25, so it terminates. So one fourth is a rational number. Okay. Now, let me draw a little line here. I know it's a little sloppy. I don't have the best handwriting in the world. How about the square root of two? Well, the square root of two is definitely not a whole number. It's definitely not an integer. It's definitely not a natural number. And if you type the square root of two into a calculator, you're going to see. It, it does not repeat. It's, <coughs> excuse me, it's 1.4142135.62 and on it goes. So it does not terminate, it does not repeat. So this would be an irrational, excuse my handwriting, irrational number. Okay? So that's what you're going to do in your homework tonight, or take some numbers and put them in the correct category. I warned you, this is a very easy lesson. We're starting off easy. It's going to get harder and harder as the year goes on, but we are taking the first week to two to two and a half weeks to review, review, review. And by the way, the review is going to get into factoring. It's going to get into graphing. It's going to get into solving uh, first degree and second degree equations. It's going to get into adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational expressions. So this is not going to be easy all the way through the review chapter, but right now it is starting off pretty easy. Okay, all right, let's move on to one more topic for the day. So far the video has only been 15 minutes, and a normal class is much longer that th than that in school, so we're doing really well on time. All right, here we go. I would like you to copy this in your notes, please. We are moving on to lesson R.2. That's the review chapter, section 2, and it's called scientific notation. Now, scientific notation is taught in middle school. Um, in high school, you're supposed to know this, so I am assuming that most of you have used scientific notation before. Um, you do not need to write down this next sentence, but just listen to me. Scientific, no unless you want to write this down, scientific notation is another, and I should have put the word away in there, sorry about that, is another way to write extremely small or extremely small numbers in a smaller way. And I'll give some examples here real quick. The number 1,250,000 
could be written in scientific notation as 1.25 times 10 to the sixth. This really small number here, 0 0.000052 in scientific notation would be 5.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative fifth. Now, uh, you might have forgotten some of this, and I'm going to teach you now how to do this, and you might fall asleep and find this really easy, and, and if so, be thankful, okay? But I want to very quickly review scientific notation, then tomorrow we're going to look at multiplying and dividing numbers that are in scientific notation, and you really, really, really need to know how to do this, okay? So once again, we're looking at scientific notation. Scientific notation is another way to write extremely small or extremely large numbers in a smaller way. And this should look somewhat familiar, I believe, in your past math education, all right? Please copy this first problem in your notes, if you would. I would appreciate that. Let's look at the number 1,670,000. Now, if I ask you to write that in scientific notation, please watch carefully what I do. You first of all have to find the decimal. And if you don't see the decimal, then it's always here to the right. So there it is. I found it. All right. Now, we're going to move the decimal. And a lot of students become confused with, Mr. Earhart, where should I stop? Do I, do I move the decimal here, here, here? You always want to stop. Now, watch what I say, please. You always want to stop when there's one digit to the left of the decimal. So in other words, if I move the decimal and I stopped right here, notice I would have one, two digits to the left of the decimal, and that's no good. If I stopped and put the decimal right here, that's perfect. I have one digit right here to the left of the decimal. So you always want to move the decimal in such a way that you have one digit right here to the left. So. Let's move the decimal. You can count with me quietly or out loud, whatever. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's where I want to stop, right there. So I move the decimal six places. So with that in mind, then my answer would be 1.67. Notice I don't need all these zeros. I can drop them. 1.67. And you always put times 10, always, because that's basically saying you're moving the decimal every time, um, which is like a tenth, okay? So yeah, this number here is always going to be a 10. And how many places did we say we moved the decimal? Six places. So I put a six right here. There, you did it. You took a number written in standard form and you wrote it in scientific notation. And again, probably most of you are falling asleep. This is really old math. You should have seen this many times. And that's another good thing about videos. If you get this and you want to fast forward and move on, that's up to you. Okay? But again, it's my job to review. We're starting off very, very simple and then getting much more difficult as the week goes on. Okay. Um, 8,904,000,000. I want you to write this in scientific notation. So please watch carefully. The decimal's here. And I'm going to have to move it all the way to right here. Now remember, I'd stop here because there's one digit to the left of the decimal if I stop right here. And so let's see what happens. Let's move this decimal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I move the decimal nine places. So my answer would be 8.904. Now notice I could not drop that zero there. I could not. It's in between um, two whole numbers there. Um, but I can drop all of these zeros on the end. So 8.904 times 10 to the 9. Are you getting this okay? It's really not that difficult. Okay. But what about, notice these last numbers. This number here was a really big number, 1 million. This number here was 8 billion. What if I gave you a number like this and I asked you to write this in scientific notation? Now, this is a real small number. I think we'd all agree with that, 0 .000092, okay? Now, I've taught you to move the decimal until there's one digit to the left of the decimal. Now let's think about that for a second. Okay, now watch this. This is a real small number and 0 .000092. So if I move the decimal 
if I stopped here, some students would say, oh, Mr. Earhart, I stopped right here because I have one number or one digit to the left of the decimal. Well, I was not referring to zeros when I said that, and I kind of assumed you would know that because zeros are what we're trying to drop off anyway. So I would want to move this decimal. Now, some students like to stop right here. Now, if you stop there, you don't have any digits to the left. They're all zeros. Remember, you want to have one digit to the left of the decimal. Well, if I put the decimal here, I've got two numbers to the left. One, two. That's not going to work. But if I put the decimal right here, then I have one digit to the left of the decimal. So that's where I want to stop is right there. So let's move the decimal one, two, three, four, five places. So I move the decimal five places. Now watch this carefully. So scientific notation would be 9.2 times 10. Now remember, back here when we had really large numbers like 8 million and 1 million, we use a positive exponent and a positive exponent. But on this one, because we had a real small number and we were moving the decimal this way, we not, we're not going to put a 5. We're going to put a negative 5. So 9.2 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay? Let's try one more, and then we'll go backwards, and then we're done. And I think that's going to be class. Um, that's going to be the entire class in 25 to 30 minutes. And that's really, really good. A normal class at a normal school is about 30, is about 50 minutes. I will always try to keep the videos very, not very, very short, but as short as I possibly can um, so as not to bore you a whole lot. Okay, now what if I asked you to write this in scientific notation? Well, first of all, I'm going to move the decimal all the way to right here because if I stop there, I have one digit, 5, to the left of the decimal right here. So that's where I'm going to stop the decimal, okay, right here. So let's move the decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I move the decimal 8 places. And so now with that in mind, my scientific notation answer would be 5.14 times 10 to the negative 8, not positive 8, negative 8. Okay, because it was a real small number and the decimal was way over here to the left, and so it's going to be a negative 8 for the exponent. All right, so what we have done is we have taken numbers and we've written them in scientific notation. Now, you young men are smart men. Let's go backwards really, really quick. Take some really good notes. I'll try to go fast and then we're done. Let's go backwards. What if I said we had 4.1 times 10 to the 6? And I said, I want you to write this in standard notation. Right now it's in scientific notation. Now watch. Now I see that I have a positive exponent. Do you see that? So I know I don't want to move the decimal this way because that's going to give me a really small number, point something. And whenever I have a positive exponent, I want to have a large number. I'm going to move it this way. So I know I'm going to take 4.1 and move the decimal six places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I've got to put a 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here. So your final answer is 4,100. Do you see how I did that? This number here told me how many places to move the decimal. Pretty cool. Let's try another one. I told you I'd go pretty fast because I think you're really getting this. And this really is middle school math. And and uh, believe me, this will not be what the class is like this year. We're just reviewing and making sure making sure everybody remembers this. Okay, 8.409 times 10 to the 11th power. This is scientific notation. Let's write this in standard notation. Um, it's a positive 11, so I'm not going to move the decimal this way. That would give me a real small number. I'm going to move it to the right, and I'm going to move it 11 places. So let's see what we come up with when that happens. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, and then 8 more places. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I've got to fill in these zeros. I know I'm not being super neat, but I think you get the idea. So I have four, eight zeros. So here is my answer. There we go. 
804,900,000,000. All right, now let's very quickly look at two more examples, and we're finally finished with the first day of class. So you've been troopers, and my stopwatch says it's been about 26 minutes, so not too bad. 3.15 times 10, oh, look at this, to the negative 6. Now, because the exponent is negative, I'm not going to move the decimal this way. That would make a really large number. I'm going to move the decimal this way, and I'm going to move it six places. So 3.15, so six places, one, and then five more, two, three, four, five, six. So my decimal is now here, and I've got to fill in five, zero. So point, one, two, three, four, five, three, one, five. Point zero, 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 three, one, five. Okay, one more, and we're done for the day. So. I know you guys are glad about that. 6.27 times 10 to the negative 10. All right. Well, notice it's a negative exponent, so I'm not going to move the decimal this way. That would give me a really large number. I'm going to move it this way, which would give me a small number. So 6.27, and I've got to move it 10 places. So 1, and then 9 more. 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's your decimal. Again, I'm not trying to be super neat. I guess that's obvious, but there we go. So we should have nine zeros, point, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 2, 7. And there's your decimal. I hope you're getting this. Um, work on the homework and work on the homework very well, please. I want you to do page 7, numbers 1 through 10 all. That would be 10 problems. And then 51 through 67. Look at this, students. Just the odd. Just the odd, okay? And <coughs> that would be, what, 9 problems. So you have a total of 19 problems all together, okay? That's not that many. I think you'll be done with that probably about 30 minutes or less. It's not a very hard assignment. And uh, remember now, if you need to, you can go ahead and look at the homework video. I've done a video for you there on these problems. So if you get stuck, you can watch the video, fast forward it, rewind it to the problems you're struggling with, and get some help that way.